and his lovely wife, Dr. Brown. And to all of you men and women of God of faith and patience and power. What was your name again? Janika? And your last name? White? Uh, stand up just a minute. I don't want to. No, no. I respect what you do, but I said last night to this aggregate of people, for those who remember, I said, something's happening in your Memphis, Tennessee, where God's about to pass the baton to women. You will be fought by two people. One is a hater already. They've been around your cabinet, so, so they secretly don't want you to win. But God said, tonight, because you came and didn't speak and walked straight out the door, God said, tell her I'm going to put my hand behind her and continue to push. Some of y'all are too quiet up in here. And the scripture declares for talkers, if God be for us, hallelujah, I feel it. This girl got the spirit of God in her. But if God, and y'all are not encouraging enough, but if God be for us, who can be against us? Now the Holy Ghost says, tell her I really have something greater than what she's running for. Tell her I don't want her to get comfortable. Tell them this is something that I promised like a mother or somebody. Somebody had big, big dreams for you. Huge dreams. And God says, what you're running for is just a stepping stone. God said, when I'm finished, they'll put purple on your back. They'll treat you like you are the highest official in your, in your city and state. I need us to thank God for, hear what I call her, Prophetess Deborah. Yell it. I need us to thank God for Judge Deborah. Out of all of the judges in the book of Judges, only one was a woman. And that was Deborah. I believe that you're going to do things that people only talked about doing. And I believe God's going to take you to heights unknown. We will cover you in prayer. I'm not even from here, but I'm going to put you on my list. And when you make it big, just remember the man of God. Can we clap for this great woman of God tonight? I also want you to clap for the success of your neighbor and do it real good while looking at him. Come on, sustain it. You that are watching by Facebook or YouTube, we salute you and clap for your success. I don't know how long we will prophesy or not, but I am. I don't know if it's on camera or here, but I'm glad I was able to get that out to Sister White. But, but whose last name is Ross? Who's Ross? Somebody needs to call your friend. Okay, well, I don't know who it is. What's her name? Nata. Who has her phone number? Come here. No, no, I don't want to talk to her. I'm going to let you talk to her. Come up here. She said, pick up the phone, baby. And how well do you know her? Okay, she goes to Logic, and y'all are on some committee together. I want you to either text her, oh, she's probably on her way. I want you to text her writer, because she's probably too busy cooking. Yeah. This is a new day. She said, can I record you? Go ahead. She on live? That's okay, but this is her girl recording, so tell her. And uh, I see God opening... 
it's going to be crazy because I don't know how to subscribe. She needs to create an online food service. Online food service, November the 11th. That's her birthday. Oh, she calling her back. Hey, listen, we having fun. We outside in these streets. I ain't in church. I'm outside. November the 3rd is her birthday. I want you to let her know if she's still watching that she needs to pray over her pies because they're going to make a lot of money. You folk over here, don't scream, don't clap. Y'all okay? What now? She just posted some pies today. All right. Because tonight is going to be a night where God is going to absolutely breathe air and life into businesses. So if you have an idea, if you have a dream, you should jump up and thank God for sister. Uh, whatever her name is, is gone. There should be a lady on the way if she's not arrived already. I keep hearing the name Sylvia. Sylvia. Um, Pastor Brown, please remind me before the tent meeting is over tonight, somebody remind me in a smooth way to call Sylvia. She should have been here already. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing her. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, she should have been here already. But when you make stops by people's houses, oh, the law says she online too now. But when you make stops, Sylvia, by people's houses, when you should have came to church, not that it's bad, but you can't be uh, sidetracked and detoured. But the Lord told me to tell you this, then when you get here, Dr. Brown will lay hands on you, but 15 folk are going to jump up because one person in here has somewhat or works for the same company and they're gonna build a house from the ground up when they scream, but Lord said he was gonna bless you to make enough money to retire from FedEx. Run. That's the one person who works for the same company. Now, we don't have time to do it like we do in church. Y'all got to do it like we in these streets. Because if y'all want to have church, let's go in the building. I want to have street. Come here. Let me ask you something. What is your last name? Mary? Mary, M-U-R-R-A-Y. And what's your first name? Sonia, Sonia, Sonia Mary, and what name did I first call? Are y'all blood sisters? Uh, um. And she works at FedEx and Mother Brown used to be her supervisor. Huh? You were her senior manager. How long she been at FedEx? Because the Lord says the money he's about to give her out of that company is going to be ridiculous. And because you ran, God said there's a four-bedroom home waiting on you. Are y'all jealous or are we celebrating? Sister LaToya Brown. Oh, 
I hear somebody screaming somewhere. That lady done ran out in the streets. We in these streets. Believe it or not, that's how the world know that we serve a living God. You may be seated. I'll get back to preaching in a minute or to prophesying. I keep hearing businesses, ideas, dreams. I feel like I want to preach from this chair too. But many of you, please hear what the Lord is saying. And if you catch it in the spirit of God, I want you to jump up and selfishly praise God like it's you. God says, by next year, you will be unemployable. God says, I'm going to take the wealth of the wicked and start giving it to those that have ideas, dreams, visions. The only thing you didn't have was the money. High five your neighbor and tell them, that's me right there. That is me. Your suffering, your tears. I'm looking for Miss Perkins, but your suffering. Is that Anitha? The Lord said, be real with him. Don't be greedy because you're a great woman. You, got, you have one of the purest hearts for people. God says, so tell her she got 48 hours to tell me what she thinks she's worth, and that's what I'm cutting the check for. Tell her I'm also going to heal her in her back and her legs. I'm going to show her who I, why y'all jealous like that? Are y'all helping her? Just looking. That's called Shabbat. In the Greek, in the Hebrew, I'm sorry, that's called Shabbat. To be loud, to be festive, to celebrate, to scream in public, to act jovial. That's how you experience miracles. I said, if he hears you, he'll see you. Now, this is how we used to have church. Lord, bring all the mothers back with a mouth. All of them. And put these young people somewhere who only get loud when they get a mic. But mine is when I think of the goodness can I get 30 people out of this tent of Jesus and all that he's done for me? You finish it. While she's screaming, a woman that may be looking at me through the lenses needs to be in church again. Your name is Jacqueline. It looks like Robinson. 
Look on your phone, see if that person in there. If y'all want their money, then they don't deserve a prophecy. People watching ain't a part of the service. If God talks to me about who's in that truck, who's a handicap, I'll talk to them that's riding in that truck too. Sure will. God is up to something great. Now, let me say this, and I want to be a little facetious, a little um, raunchy. That if two folk are sitting near each other and both of you are quiet, y'all have contaminated your rope. Because God inhabits not pra the praises of his people. And one quiet, stuck-up person. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That's what the tent should look like. Leave them. Because they got us. You just get up and run. Young lady, show me your face. Now you can cover it. How old are you? 27. Did you hear me for the past 20-something minutes say God is breathing into ideas, dreams, Wait a minute. Have you gotten married? Where is he? Because the Lord said I'm giving one million and then two million. I don't know how this is going. God said y'all need to bring the businesses together. I don't... Are y'all helping her or y'all just looking? We out here in these streets. And young man, what is your first name? Quentin? Quintel. And where the devil thought, and it was going to happen quick, that he could make y'all think that y'all made a mistake? God said at midnight, all of that is gone. Y'all good. And God said, you will never leave the church again. Not one time. Are y'all with Quintel or you're not? Your mouth is holding the deliverance of somebody that's right in your proximity. Your eyes can't do nothing. But his praises shall continually. Be in my mouth. Lorabanda sakalamondo silibe. Hallelujah. 
Asalamando lo moria. I said, Hallelujah. Raskiliamban soko pere kisi pura. La reben sopoturia bakisaya. Lekong bakalan si brisi puria. Bakle asimon baki. Glory mas shobalai. Glory. And some of that translation in tongues was just a scripture that God said if they would obey that alone, I'll bless everyone. The scripture is if I be lifted up from the Nashobai and the Dia, from the earth, I'll draw all men. Hallelujah. You may be seated, get a Bible, give me 30 good minutes. Hallelujah. That sound like Mother Perkins. I'll never forget her sound. My topic tonight, just for those who would scream, because now I'm teaching, you're listening, but you that have church flavor, talk to me every now and then so I don't get bored or remember I'm in pain. But the topic is prophetic for 100 of you that would scream. It's called, It's Coming From Everywhere. Just look at somebody and tell them it's coming from everywhere. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly, come on here, above all that we could ask or think, but it said according to the power that works in you. According to the power, ushers be on duty, that works in you. Which means whatever he's going to do is based upon something he wants from you. What does God want from me? Stay here. We're good. I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 1. Verses 1 through 6. Psalm. Chapter 1. I'm going to read the entire first psalm. Don't worry, we're going to church like this all night. It does not distract me, but listen to the word of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. I'm at verse 3 for those that are with me. And he shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit, his fruit in his season. Oh, I'm glad y'all love the word. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, this side talking in that the middle shall prosper. What about the ungodly? What about the drug dealer? What about those that are getting cars and we still walking? The ungodly are not so. It's an illusion. It's a distraction. It's a deterrent. But they are like.
like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Verse 5, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the sinners or of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Thank you. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through 9 are my last scriptures. Then I'm going to braid this hair. I wish he would keep prophesying. I am through the scripture right now. But because you want to be selfish, you want God to forget the corporate body. Joshua 1 beginning at verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses. I love this side again. So shall I be with thee. How was he with Moses? Every time Moses got to a place called stuck, God made a way out of no way. Look at somebody and tell him God's about to make a way out of no way for me. Bad credit, you still going to be approved. No college degree, you still going to get the job. God's about to show you who he is in the absence of what you thought you needed. As I was with Moses... So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. Can I read the Bible? Be strong. And of good courage. For unto this people tonight thou shalt divide an inheritance. I shall divide for an inheritance the land. And everything I didn't give your fathers, I'm going to give to you. Y'all yeah. are missing the bigger picture. Whenever God prophesied to your great-grandparents and it didn't come to pass, that prophecy went over to your grandparents. When it didn't hit your grandparents, it went to your parents. When it didn't get to your parents, it came to you. Make sure you get it all. Don't let it go no further. He said, and what your father David did not build, thy son Solomon shall. Now, I just said something, but I got to finish reading. But let me go in and out, fade in and out, and talk to those who are prophetic for real. You're going to think I'm kidding because I'm not going to be preaching about money, but money is a part of the text. That's not something that I preach on. That's something I travel the world and teach for Fortune 500 companies or just companies itself. That's how I make my real money, not playing around with church people. So let me say this to three of you who will scream and mean it. There are at least, in most of you that are in your 20s, at least three generations of money. If you're in your 40s, there's at least two generations of money. And here's a scripture that will help you. For you that didn't scream, maybe you ain't got no money. He said, and I shall give you enough to bless and leave an inheritance for your children's children. Which means for you that ain't married and don't even have grandkids, they already taken care of. So the reason why the devil's trying to kill some of you is if he gets you, he gets the wealth of your whole generation. And the devil hates you so much that he's fighting you through your family. You're shocked by who's your assailant is. It's not a sinner. It's not the street. It's not a gang lord. It's another tongue speaker.
So for some of you that's being attacked from the inside out, not the outside in. Help me preach. I'm almost done. We'll be at verse 6. Be strong. Look somebody, tap them and tell them, be strong, you hear? And of good courage, for unto this people shall I divide for an inheritance the land that I swear to your fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe, they're not ready, to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right, Y'all ain't reading it. Or to the left. It's on the screen. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book can't get no convocation help over here. This book from Genesis to Revelation. This book y'all hush your mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That sounds like Psalms. That sounds like the book of Psalms. You read it, but you didn't pay attention. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate. All right, now it's being talked to. And what generation is this book Joshua to? The Joshua generation. I tonight in the name of Jesus bind the spirit of poverty, lack, disease, discouragement, depression, and I release success, salvation. Y'all not talking to me. Everything that says, look what God has done. Sometimes the only proof that God has that he's still a miracle working God is how well he takes care of you. Let me say something, because this side want me to preach. Waymaker. Help me. Miracle worker. Hey, I ain't going to say what it is, but some of y'all really like me, but you're jealous of me at the same time. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You never have to be jealous of something that opens his arms to you. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all according to that which in the law, which Moses thy servant, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not, that's where I want to go, from it, nor from the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have what? Some of you ain't even reading your own future. That's a shame. What type of success? So if there's a good success, then there has to be a bad success. And the reason why some of you are still broke temporarily and struggling, and I hope you scream, is because God said, I'm giving it to you the right way. If you keep looking at people that are getting blessed the wrong way, when you get your house, it won't be because you slept with three men. And if they say you do, tell them I slept with four. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What is that called? Meditating on his word. Day and night. You need somebody in your friendship circle that knows how to regurgitate scripture. You need someone that can tell you, you are too anointed, you come too far, don't you do that, don't give up now, because most of the time the temptation is the hardest when you're the closest. But your mind is cloudy, I don't hear nobody, and foggy because you're looking at the problem more than the promise. I'm halfway to closing, because they're not encouraging me. Mm -mm. 
Have not, verse 9, have not I commanded thee? This is the third time. Be strong. What does strength look like? Allow me to tell you. And allow me to tell five folk who will jump for me after this, and that's this. Strength is you going through hell, but when you're in public, can't nobody tell. They're jealous of your struggle because they don't think you're struggling. And if they are jealous now, they're going to hate you later because what you think I have, I will have it after this meeting. Jealousy is the way that an enemy prophesies. Jealousy is the way the enemy prophesies. If they say, you've been running around that church, you think you're going to get a house from running around? That's jealousy. But if they know you were foolish, they wouldn't even bring it up. They're bringing it up because you're going to catch them in half the time. And they got theirs through three jobs. You got yours from one praise to a one God. If you delight yourself, the Bible says, also in the Lord, he will give you. The desires of your heart. Third time, be strong and of good courage. Except it adds something it never had the other two times. And this is where I need 50 of you to scream for yourself. Because when he say be strong enough, good courage, that means when you get to where God is about to bless you, something horrific is going to jump out at you. So he says, you know it's me when something pops up that scares you. So he adds the third thing, be not afraid. That's when you're going to hear false diagnosis. You have cancer. You need heart thing. Your mama dying. That's when you got to stand like old mothers and be like, the devil is a liar. Satan the Lord. I wish I could teach y'all how to do it. You got to know how to bounce back and be, I know you ain't talking to me. Because as for me and my house. We will. Let me, let me give the words to my great-grandmother, my song. She's going to be with the Lord. She died at 106. My grandmama died at 98. But I promised him that I, y'all ain't, would serve him till I die. Because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. Here's why. Forget how broke you are, how hurt you are, how sick they say you are. For those who are worshipers, stay that way. It says, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest. So when you go to get a car because you need it, not because you want to floss or flex. Nobody will let you use their car. Your family won't pick you up and drive you. You just need a car. But you ain't got no money. You got bad credit. God says, this time you go, I'll go with you. Y'all ain't talking. Whereas you would get no, God says, if I'm with you, yes is the only answer. Because the Bible said the blessings of the Lord are yea and amen. Look at somebody and see if that person is friendly with you and prophesy and tell them it's coming from everywhere. <laughs> Dr. Brown, after this, you can preach it. You can hoop it. I'll give you the mic. But believe it or not, those who truly serve God and love him, you have a season coming.
That season in identification is basically defined with these words for two folk who will jump for Pastor Brown. The tables are turning. Late in the midnight hour, God is going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. See, right now, what we are screaming over is we're meditating on his word. He didn't call your name for you to scream. He's addressing your corporate situation. Because some of you, I don't know, I, I love Prophet Hall, but, but when he come, he just make us scream too much. Let's see how you act when they tell you that somebody bought you a house. Let's see if you try to be swagged out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ought to burn it down. The tables are turning. The song, the lyrics say this from Brother v Vashon Mitchell. It says, it won't always be like this. Y'all help me preach. The Lord will perfect this concerning me. Sooner or later. Look to mine tell him, better sooner than later for me. It's going to turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. If we do the biblical arithmetic, biblical scriptural mathematics, we also have to come to grips with this for this side who's been pushing me so healthily. And that's this. God said your ladder will be greater than your past. God said your ladder will be greater than your beginnings. That's what he said. If we are interpreting this correctly for 500 of you to yell, then that means if since you've been saved, you've been going through hell, that's the right way because your ladder will be greater. So what God is actually doing is he's letting you get through the worst part right now. I'm going to prophesy to talkers. And by the end of this year, your next five, six, seven years will be the best years of your Christian walk because it's turning around for me. The only thing that can stop what I'm preaching is your unbelief. No witchcraft, no gooby dust. You have to not believe it. Now after this, we're going to take it serious and I'm closing. But ten of you now push me who love the Bible. We, I want, I want y'all out in these streets to hear this. We must be careful, especially this next generation of pastors preaching the prosperity gospel over salvation. And you save women must stop being attracted to men with bling bling and cars and, and go get your own. So that he don't feel like he bought you, you just upgraded what I already did for myself. Some preacher over here got nervous because you switched all your holy preaching for this prosperity gospel. Oh, Brother Hall, be careful because I was about to open the word of faith doors to you. 
I've been to Rod Parsley's. I've been to a lot of people, and I don't mind going to other people, and I had one of the greatest meetings ever, but I have to preach the truth. And here goes some of my truth. Brother, you believe the scripture? I believe the scripture. Somebody over here pushed me. Ready? Well, the Bible said he wants us to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosper. Stop! And they take that scripture, and they create a whole new Bible. And now we have come to the prosperity gospel. But let me help those who didn't go to seminary or to school of divinity, which I have been, but I try to preach on people's level. But let me say this so two of you can jump because you need the scripture. If the Bible said he wants us to prosper and be in health, then why are we struggling? Simply is this for three folk. It, it, they didn't read the whole scripture. The scripture says, I wish. You have somebody in the front row mad now because they've been, it said, I wish above all. It was a leader's wish. Okay, it wasn't about the money in the house. It was about the latter part because he said prosper and be in health. Then he said, even as. And the only way a soul prospers is by eating the word of God. So God says your next house is on the level of your spiritual appetite. It is not because of a scripture. It's because you digest the scripture. And what does the scripture say? It said, y'all don't like it, if I suffer with him. See, you scream over money but not over suffering. I shall reign with him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the Christ that lives in me, which I have my church, and the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and died for me. Beloved, think it not strange when fiery trials shall come against you, but rejoice. Y'all not win. In as much as ye are partakers with Christ's suffering. Well done. Thy good. I need to walk out of here. And faithful servant. Some of you scream, you've been faithful over a few things, which meant you made me look good in your bad situation. Now I shall make you ruler. Y'all ain't screaming. You that ain't talking, sit down, will you? And let the talkers see. I shall now make you ruler over not many people, many things. So they're preaching prosperity. But Jesus necessarily, not even indirectly, for those who preach it, you can. He did not die for the wealth of the world. He died, y'all ain't talking to me, so that rich folk ain't the only folk that can go to heaven. If you on section 8 and you walking with God, you going to heaven. See, it's not about how we live here. It's about where we spend eternity. I'm going to use my great-grandmama again. Y'all ain't with me. I'm on my way to heaven. Y'all don't know this. And I'm so glad that the world can't do me no harm. Five minutes left. So Mark 8 and 36 says these words. Then we'll flip it back to the text. And we'll get happy for each other's blessings. Mark 8 and 36 for those who love the Bible. For what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world. And lose his soul. 
now, Sean, as you can see, my notes are getting a little sporadic now. So let me read this part, then I'll let you go. Dr. Brown, wherever you are, and all of you, Mother Brown and Pop Brown, and to you special people who I so love tonight, sometimes the worst thing that happens to you is the reason why you and Jesus ever met each other. This leads us to Christ. Let me give an example. Let me give you four of them. And to each one that screams, you'll, you, you'll be closer to your miracle if you catch this. It was a woman caught in the act of adultery who met Jesus. Hold on, y'all gonna miss. And she didn't pay for it. She didn't even pay for the sin she did. Because some folks say you ain't going to never be blessed because you sin too much. It was the woman with the issue of blood that crawled to Jesus. Reason why she crawled to Jesus for 10 folks who would scream, she ran out of money spending it on doctors. So what would it profit her? To gain the whole world while she's losing her soul. For some screaming men, because the women done left me. Several men in the Bible without sight and born with no vision is the reason why they found Jesus. I don't have to see him to know he's real. Oh, I don't. God's not dead because I can feel him. I wish I had that. And I can feel him in my feet and I can feel him. I know he's real because of the testimony of the saints. He delivered Daniel out of the lion's den. He delivered the Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace. Paul and Silas got him out without bail. Y'all ain't talking to me. And if you're screaming, you're going to catch it. So if your soul gets fed tonight, the next thing you go after, God says, my will, my bill. Y'all ain't And let me tell you what my great grandma said. If God can't do it. But let me tell you what my grandmother said. Tis no secret. Y'all preach, he'll bless you. What God can do. What he's done for others. He'll do the same for you. With his arms wide open. Y'all don't know the rest of the words, millennials. He'll pardon you. Tis no secret. Well, I gave him my old filthy garment. And he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That is why come where the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. Just grab somebody to the right or left and make sure that that's your partner for the rest of the night and tell them it's coming from everywhere. I want to say this before I flip the script. How you act at your lowest point in life will determine how high he takes you. And some of us have gone as low as we can go. But even at my lowest state, I said, Father, I stretch. I can't get no help. My hands to thee. No other. Y'all preach. Help I know. If thou should withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether 
shall I go? Y'all get somebody's hand, I told you, and preach to them as if they're about to get a million dollars tomorrow and say, neighbor, I came to Jesus just as I was weary, weary, worn and sad. But I found, I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. Y'all get that neighbor's hand and get happy with him and say, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, Jesus paid it all. Oh, to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washes white as snow. Y'all still ain't preaching to your neighbor because the person that's talking to you is going to help get God in your midst because it said where there's two or three gathered together. If you change your company, God will change your currency. You got to get with somebody that wants to see you blessed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, by tomorrow morning, I want God to open doors for you that no man can shut. But tonight is our night to prove that even if he don't do it, he's still able. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence to the only wise God. I wish I had my church now. Our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Lean on your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, God's working it out right now. But don't wait till the battle's over. Don't wait until your bills are paid. Don't wait until he heals your body. But make up in your mind. You gonna shout right now. Because what's coming is better than what's been. Satan, you should have killed me while you had me. But I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining. Every day, no higher plane that I have found. Help me preach and say, Lord, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Shake a neighbor and another neighbor. And let's have some calisthenics going on in the house of God. Let's have our own macarena. And shake a neighbor like a salt shaker. And say, oh, neighbor. Come on, let's have some Kojic church now. And say, oh, neighbor. Congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Ask your neighbor, how did you come out of what you were in? Tell them it's this simple. I came to Jesus just as I was weary, worn, and sad. But I found in Him a resting place. If you know things are shifting, shake a neighbor for the last time and say, God wants me to tell you that by tomorrow morning, He's sending angels to your house 
the one you're in right now is not the one you're staying in so give God glory before he shifts you because God is about to turn the tables around won't he do it I said won't he do it my friend Rudolph McKissick said won't he do it look at the man and say won't he won't he won't he won't he won't he do it y'all ain't talking to me I don't steal I give credit where I heard it he said grab your neighbor by the arm and hook up with their elbows and make sure who you're touching believes that you're gonna get a miracle and if they know you're gonna be rich shake them and rock them rock them and shake them shake them and rock them rock them and shake them and then tell your neighbor it's already done won't he do it won't he do it look at your neighbor and say won't he won't he won't Look around as if your car is coming from one area, your house is coming from the other area, your spouse is coming from the other area, and tell your neighbor it's coming from everywhere. And tell your neighbor that's what the Bible meant when he said the blessings of the Lord shall overtake you. Then it said it'll make you rich and add no sorrow to it. Your days of being sorry, they are coming to an end. How did I get what I have? I got on my knees and I raised my hands and I said, Father, I stretch. Forget it. Y'all don't know that. Stop rehearsing. No other help I know oh, If thou withdraw thyself from me Now the devil gonna be mad, give me my key. And I'm gonna see if 50 people believe that you're gonna be blessed. Go with me here. Let the church say, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! Come on, that's God's answer. Yeah! Yes! Now put your hands together and shout yes, Lord. I said shout yes, Lord. I said shout yes, Lord. I'm one of my shianda. I'm closing. I'm closing. But before we close, I need 30 of you, then I must prophesy, not offering. I must speak a word into your life. I need 30 of you who are fully persuaded. Dr. Hall, Brother Hall, I have really been going through ups and downs, and I really ain't got no friends I can trust with my business. And every time I trust someone, I'm the one getting hurt. This is not a dance for music. This is a prophetic dance. God said, this is your last dance in your last season. Hold on. 
You can't go to the next season without your praise being left in the one you're in now. I'm going to give y'all two minutes only. You that can't dance, you can clap. You that can't clap, you can cheer someone on. You that can't do none of it, maybe you should go home. The worst person to take out to eat is a person that's not hungry. You take them out, order whatever, I don't want nothing. That's bad company. But if you believe everything I preach has the potential to start coming to pass by the morning, I'm going to give you two minutes to change your posture. One, two, one, two, three. I know y'all think I'm just filling in the blanks, but I don't play church. That's why I'm spinning in the chair, because I actually, that's my dance. And I was nervous because the pulpit's not even. But the Lord said, there's a group of you, a cluster, that are dancing, and you're dancing like you're courageous, because you're in a fiery situation right now. God says he does not want everyone dancing unless you choose. He said, but if you're in something right now that you actually need God to in intervene and intercept, you got 30 seconds to get it and need it.
don't believe it, but God's got a miracle with your name on it. stops do you have a mouth is there another part of you that's not exhausted praise him dr. Brown We out here in these streets. They know we here now. I want you to hold someone's hand, if you will, if someone's close enough, just as a way of showing them you are not in this by yourself. Sometimes all the person needs is to know I'm not in what I'm in by myself. I'm going to close with this. It's coming from everywhere. You should say to yourself, look at me. You should be saying to yourself, Prophet Hall, Dr. Hall, Bishop Hall, Brother Hall, where's the base of your scripture? Look at me. It says this, and ye shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. I want to read it two more times. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. One more time. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You ready? I'm going to show Dr. Brown. The rest of you can then scream, but keep that person's hand in that scripture. You see whoever it is being planted by multiple streams. Not one river. God says some of you are going to have one job but make multiple checks. God says, God says you're not going to have to move or do nothing because you're planted. Mr. Steve Harvey makes all his money with one mouth. Five, six jobs, same mouth. 
Wheel of Fortune, Steve Harvey Show, Big Shots, Family Feud. All he does is open his mouth. Some of you don't believe it, but God says, as of the rest of the week, I'm going to put you in circles. Where when you start talking your vision or your dream, two or three people are going to want to buy into it. I don't hear no. All right, you don't believe it. God said, I'm going to make you the feature at the table. And everyone else there is going to want to buy into it. Because if you change your company, God will change your currency. I'm going to say it one more time for the wealthy people. If we change our company, my money started looking much better when my circle started looking much wiser. And I am not the wealthiest person in my circle. And I'm glad I'm not because that shows me I've not arrived yet. So I want God to do exceeding. Y'all know it. Above all. So the person that you've been touching, if you did, no music. When I say thank God for them, I want you to just do this for 20 seconds. You will clap with your eyes open, looking at them, praising God, and they will see God through your eyes and claps that God has just become your biggest cheerleader for surviving the hell that you've been through. Do that right now and look at it. Doesn't that feel good? You're not in it by yourself. Hold hands. I won't prophesy this. And I don't want you to come up here, but two of you, when you started clapping for your neighbor's success, looked at your new wife and husband. You sure did. Look at folk. I should have looked at somebody. You should have looked at somebody. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. It is so important that the church starts looking from the inside out that the only way we're going to get what we need is we have to believe God for one another. I pray for you. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. I know y'all ain't been saying we're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You may not be holding a millionaire's hand yet, but you're holding a debt-free person's hand. By next year, the kingdom of God will birth more millionaires than we ever had in 2024 because God's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked and give it to the righteous he's about to fund your dreams your ideas pay off the debt so you stop stressing and then make you a living breathing testimony Look what God has done. What great-grandma say, he picked me up 
Yeah, y'all proved to me you know some. Turn me around and he planted my feet on solid ground. I get joy when I think about it. You're holding that hand with confidence. Dr. Brown, come stand at the front of the altar. Last night, I didn't go to bed. I can't remember what time. Then I woke right back up, and I was still startled because nobody believed me, but I was startled by the presence of an angel. I did not see the angel. I have seen angels before. But I asked God, what was your reason for bringing them? He says, these angels will not move until they have become obedient. So help is already situated. Everywhere you're going and everywhere you've been, God has had help. But those ambushments must be activated. You know what I mean? The Bible said, and when they sang praises unto God, the ambushments were released. Some of you have paralyzed help. We have to start obeying God. Huh? Keeping his word. No, we in his streets. He ain't, he ain't in our church. The tents on his streets. We need to trust God. I have never felt so powerful last night because God says, Todd, I need you to preach sermons that will cause the people to believe like their grandparents. That's why I'm going so far back. So y'all pray for me tomorrow when I preach last time around and I talk about the walls of Jericho. Whatever's been restricting you to what's yours, it has to fall down tomorrow. London Bridge. Y'all don't know the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. But up came the sun and dried up all the rain. I'm glad, see? You see how the young people got lost? That's because you don't know the Bible like we do. All you know is TikTok, Snapchat. But none of that helps you get where you're going unless you are a real creative. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit score is going up 100 points if necessary. If necessary. I cannot, Brown stand there, I cannot disobey God. So this is the way that I have to do the offering, and he's been on me all day today. I have not been out. I have not done anything for anyone. The very first night, there was a real problem, and the Lord told me on Monday when Dr. Latrice preached, right, I was going to call you, but I didn't have to because God had me lay on my face, but I did tell two of my members. I said, the devil is so angry with Brown that he planned on attacking the tent meeting through gun shooting. Now the reason why I'm saying it out loud, y'all don't believe it, is the person who was gonna do it drove by here four times. And he drove by looking for some man who's been messing with his girlfriend. See, the Bible said warning comes before destruction. But the Lord told me, go to the meeting just to show the people that you and him are in covenant. And, and I know you're hurt, but sometimes people will create a narrative that's not true. So I'd rather you go than to stay home. And when I got off the plane, the Lord said, I'm calling off all attacks, not just against the tent meeting, against your family, your children, your jobs. I know you don't believe it. Those who have attended the meeting personally, God said, I'm calling off all attacks. I 
I don't have a prophecy, but are you from here? Are you visiting? You here on business for how long? You can leave at five. What, what type of connection do you have with the potter's house? Oh, you're one of his ordained deacons. All right. And you're with Pastor Gerald Brady and Joby Brady. All right, good, good. Cause, because Joby watches me. The bishop watches me. I want to say to you that God says to tell you this. He said, tell him I need him to pick two states and I'm going to give him three homes. <laughs> tell him I'm going to give him an office in both states. Y'all ain't talking to me. And someone with a loud mouth that's not jealous... And then the Lord said, if anyone can restore your family, it's him. I'm making you the prophet of your generation. This time they will hear you. That's all I say right now. I want you to hold that hand for the last time. I have to obey God. I'm going to ask and I'm not going to.